Welcome to Mainland, your local regional television station. I'm Chrissy Small and some of the stories coming up in today's news. Nick Smith is in our studio talking about lawful tax avoidance. Steiner Autumn Fair Dragon theme attracts the crowds and eldest adventure racer finishes with a beer and a pie and a hug from the wife. And more stories. MP for Nelson, Nick Smith, was in our studio for a catch-up and with the ongoing news in the media after release documents to the foreign press have exposed New Zealand as one of the many tax havens for trusts, I spoke to him about the subject of lawful tax avoidance. This week we've had quite a bit in the news about um, offshore trusts, yeah. you know, um, partaking in legitimate tax avoidance. Um, would this be common practice in New Zealand, do you think? No, it's not. And so the first thing I'd be really clear about is there's no issue in terms of these trusts being used by New Zealanders to avoid tax. Right? That's, not, that's not being debated mm. at all. What's being debated is that there's been about 10 million papers released uh, from Panama, from a particular law firm, that run a system of trusts around the world to hide people's money. Uh, and it would be not surprising, given there are 10 million documents, that some of them will mention New Zealand. Mm. I'm sorry, that's just inevitable. The bit, uh, and we, we need to have a bit of a look and see where the look is, is, is our law in that area. If you look at all of the international agencies, yeah. you know, you've got the Cayman Islands, you've got places like Jersey, you've got places that have got a reputation for being a tax haven. New Zealand is not. In fact, all the international reports says that we have one of the good systems of tax. Not perfect. We're always looking to do it. We've got a lot of work going on at the moment where you've got these large international companies that have got businesses occurring in a number of different countries and how do we make sure that they don't shift their income off to the Cayman Islands or wherever it might be that they can reduce their tax. And we're ganging up with other countries to try and make sure that those multinationals pay their fair share. So yes, we need to have a look at it, we need to keep an open mind on it, but the idea that New Zealand uh, is some great tax haven I think is very untrue but I also think it's inevitable when you've got 10 million documents that there will be some references to transactions going through New Zealand at some stage. Right, so these trusts uh, that people are using to hide their money, it seems fairly unethical really, doesn't it? Well no, there can be quite legitimate interests for having trusts. You know, you have a person that dies and they have a substantial amount of wealth, they may have been a very successful musician and so they'll, they'll leave their money in a trust, and they'll have trustees to distribute that money to their children and their family. The idea that trusts full stop are bad things is, is oh, in my no, view, incorrect. No, no but when and, they're and equally setting so. up into tax havens, you know yeah, they that will. that's a little And that's bit the bit that we've sort of got to work out, is, yeah. is where are the legitimate? For, the, for instance, we make, if you've got a superannuation fund, your superannuation fund will be saying to look after your retirement. We don't want to put all our money in New Zealand. Might be a major disaster, might be a major period of economic. So we're going to spread those investments around the world so that we're spreading your risk to provide you with better security in your retirement. And a lot of that money will be in investment trusts. Mm. So we do need to, some people sort of get into this sort of conspiracy model, all trusts, all overseas trusts, you know, so all the people are ripping us off, you know, sort of the Winston Peters uh, conspiracy theories. Yes, there are examples mm. of where these are used dishonestly for money laundering, for drug smugglers, for people that are dealing in arms. But the vast majority of them are for absolutely you know, legitimate, uh, proper purposes. And that's where we just need to take a balanced approach, kick the tyres, check that our range is good as possible. Interestingly, our international trust law was last rewritten in 2007. Right. Uh, the minister at the time uh, was Winston Peters, uh, was the minister who wrote the law. Uh, and so for him to be sort of doing his uh, normal conspiracy theory type stuff, I do find a little bit ironic. Adventure racing, of course, has its thrills and spills, as an 18-year-old Napier woman has found out after being rescued from the Kaiteriteri Mountain Bike Park on Saturday evening after falling while competing in a youth-based adventure race. Because of the accident location and being isolated and steep, the Nelson Marlborough Rescue Helicopter had to be called in to locate the scene high up in the park. The onboard paramedic had to be winched down to the young woman where she was assessed and stabilised before being winched on board and transported to the Nelson Hospital Emergency Department 
in a serious condition. The helicopter service was called out again on Sunday to transport a 16-year-old male to the Nelson Hospital in the afternoon after he'd fallen heavily, seriously injuring his leg while out riding at a motocross track south of Wakefield. The youth had to be assessed and treated on site by the onboard intensive care paramedic before being airlifted to hospital in a stable condition. The week-long God's Own Adventure race has now wound up for the region and the races, with most flying home Monday. Organisers have now announced that next year it will be Queenstown's turn to host the World Adventure Race event. However, last Friday evening the final pursuit teams were still in the race, heading toward the finish line in the God's Own Adventure race, while spread along the Abel Tasman coastline from Totoranui along towards Kaiteriteri. I was at the beach on Friday evening to catch Team Adventure Racing as they finished the last challenge of their pursuit race, with one of their teams, 69-year-old Brian McDuffie, being the eldest adventure racer on the course. He was game enough to take on the pursuit part of the God's Own Chapter 5 race event, along with team members Michael Raitt, Michelle Gillespie and Chris Bennett, who were all in their early to mid-40s. So Brian, are you really 69? Yes, um, <laughs> unfortunately. See, aren't you a fine example? Eh? Uh, instead of being a, a, a fine example of, of what people can be doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you can do it, I think I might have to throw my hat in the, in the ring too, it's on stage. I'm not sure that it's a smart thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> but fun? It doesn't come without pain. <laughs> right, and, but yeah, yeah, of course. But um, so fulfilling, eh? Yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah. And a good team to work oh, yeah, with? Yeah, great, yeah. No, no, we, we work well together. So. Now, adventure racing. Is this your, how many adventure races have you been on, Brian? I, I hadn't done a half marathon before when I started, when I signed up for this. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, this, is, this is my third race, and the other two have been only 20k. Oh, goodness me. So, uh, Here's your, here's your mower beer. I think you deserve this one. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the pies are on their way. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> uh, it it's, um, I, I, I enlisted two, oh, two, two great coaches, <laughs> one from America and one from South Africa, and they, that's, they got me across the line. Oh, how brilliant. Yeah. Look, there you go. I think... I think um, yeah, you've got a top one. There you go. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so it's been a great team effort, eh? Yeah, you can put, all the way around. You've got to put in the hard yards and lots of it. And yeah. If you get your base fitness right, then it carries you through, and I'm a bit of a gnarly old bugger, so if that helps, do yeah. <laughs> Will you come back again? Um, maybe. I won't say yes. But, um, it's a hell of a challenge at my age. And, yeah. and you know, I'm racing with people a lot younger than I am. Yeah. Yeah, well, you are. It's hard to keep up. Yeah. yeah. But, oh no, it's been good. I mean, it was a, a brilliant course as far as I was concerned. Um, you know, it's wonderful back country and, and uh, all the challenges that threw at you, which is sort of expected. There wasn't any fancy stuff on the course, so we didn't have to get. Um, Tied up and orienteering and all that nonsense. No. <laughs> so, uh, no, it was just good back country and lots of it. Yeah. I mean, I don't care if I don't see my mountain bike for a month or <laughs> two. I've had enough of that. I mean, that's my weakest discipline. And we had that in spades. <laughs> oh, I just don't want to see that anymore for a while. <laughs> How much sleep have you had over the course of duration of the course? 20 hours. Oh. <laughs> no, no I, I don't think it's in total. I doubt it. But yeah, we only had two and a half last night. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, so oh. today's been a long day. Yeah, so after you've eaten, you'll be celebrating and then a bath and a, and a bed, I would yeah, imagine. I think a beer, <laughs> followed by a shower, and then uh, lamb chops and fried eggs oh. would be great. <laughs> And I, I might look some for some red wine as well. Oh, you think you could be into that? I'm sure someone will muscle up some of that. Hey, well done, Brian. All right, thank you. Thank you, well done. I also chanced upon the men behind the website that proved to be a popular tool for those of us watching the race unfold from the comfort of our homes, just as they were waiting for the teams to come in. The tracking has been amazing and it's been so inclusive. 
that's the that's the beauty of it. Yeah. Have, uh, how many people are hitting the website each day? Do you know? Oh, oh, we've had so many. We broke more records. I don't know. Hundreds of thousands of people, unique people, have come onto the website, which I think is just just so cool for the region. And oh yeah. Cool for the sport. And I, you know, we're just delighted the way to pick up a local sport in the way that's not so incredible. Actually, it's really Yeah. yeah, and all the stuff's really helpful. Yeah. The main, one of the main things, uh, there's two things I think that stick in the mind from, uh, from the teams has been first how beautiful the terrain, the area of the terrain is around here. They've really enjoyed the three national parks. Yeah. But also how much community support there's been. It's yes. just a never ending theme. Everybody comes from the oh, car, the people just coming out at three in the so morning, brilliant. and the kids were there with blankets wrapped around them, and there was food <laughs> all the way. It's just been brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant on every level. Oh, that's great. And so, um, is this the first time the website's actually been so interactive? Uh, no, I mean, I just think, this, I mean, it's just another year we get bigger and it gets better and I think there's been a lot more engagement and I think finally, you know, we cracked it in terms of just in, in, the incorporation of that with social media, which yeah. is so important these days. It is. So, you know, the, the whole... Yeah, um, yeah, tracking every year. Yep. Uh, but uh, it's just the, the engagement with, with people and getting the news out fast and... Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I guess having Richie McCaw isn't an absolute pain. Oh, hasn't that been? <laughs> that's been a help. <laughs> hasn't that been icing on the cake though to bring to draw in the the, the support as well, yeah. especially for Cure Kids. I mean, they've done really well out of this this oh, year. And finally, I spoke to one of the people behind some of the action images used on the website and in the media, photographer Mead Norton, who was also waiting to capture the moment of the team's arrival. So Mead, what are, what are your plans after this is all over? Uh, one of my future goals is to try to tag along with some of the New Zealand teams heading over to Australia for the Adventure Racing World Champs. Um, I believe it's in November. Okay, and how's it going to be funded? Uh, for donations? I, donations or through team sponsors. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll maybe try to go crowdfunding route or see if the sponsors of the teams will um, pick up the bill for that. Yeah, well I'm sure they'd love to have the images back from what, you, what you've already shown, what you can do. Yeah. It's fantastic effort. <laughs> Thank you. Now, oh, tell me, um, when the teams are out there working so hard, what is it you're doing behind the scenes? Uh, I'm chasing, basically keeping up with them and photographing them as they're doing what they're doing and then coming back to wherever I can get re reception and downloading and editing the images while they move on and then try to catch up to them at a future point in the race. So right. it's almost as hard work as what the racers do themselves. So how much sleep have you had? Uh, not much more than what the racers have had. And there have been a couple of days where it's probably 14 to 18 hour days. Yeah. Okay, and it's, it's still not over for you. There's still about four or five teams left to come in. Yeah, four or five teams left to come in and then probably another week or so of editing to get sort through all the images that we've taken. So why are they giving you a beer and a pie at the finish line? Uh, because we're, we can pay for it. <laughs> so you need donations. Yeah. And while on the topic of adventure racing, Nick Smith talked about the region hosting events like the God Zone Race. Nick Smith, we've got the God Zone race happening in the region. We're just It's just about at the end. It's been a spectacular event for the region, hasn't it? Oh, and tremendous. And the, and the profile that it gives uh, Nelson uh, really helps put us on the map. We've had the whole uh, buy campaign for the beach at Aura. We've now had God Zone. In terms of Nelson being a dynamic and adventurous, all those sorts of places, and the icing on the cake was having... Uh, Richie McCaw, home from two World Cup victories. That's right. Uh, also speaking uh, very kindly um, of the Nelson region. Uh, we've just got to watch all those wives. They're out dribbling over Richie McCaw <laughs> and make sure we uh, <laughs> keep, them, <laughs> keep them fenced in. <laughs> <laughs>
<gasps> shackle him, you mean? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you never know if he's in the, in the, the, the games again next year or in the race again. You, you might find a lot of wives might uh, take up the sport. Oh, it was good seeing the Kiwi crowds out there supporting, but what a tough event. Yes, it was, oh. and you know, it's, it is not just adventure, but it's an extreme sport, isn't it? It's gruelling, and the, both any of the competitors that complete it, frankly, deserve a medal, uh, but the fact they do it as a competition, but what an opportunity, like I say, to showcase the key landscapes, whether it be in terms of the, the Able Tasman, whether it be up into Kaharangi, whether it be the Murchison area and the rafting. It really just simply says Nelson's a great adventure holiday place. It does indeed. And, you know, what actually was fabulous for the region was the fact that you could live track the teams right around the course through the God Zone website. You've got to give the God Zone owners uh, and their organisation credit yes. with the way in which they're using that sort of smartphone technology for people to uh, be able to keep, actually, if you're looking from a safety point of view as well, you'd want to know where all of them were because, look, it is a, it's a pretty rugged course. There are lots of places where things could go wrong and, thankfully, weather was great, generally went well, event was a success, all credit to them. That's right. And, you know, it's the first time the race has been held here. It looks like it changes areas all the time, but it would be great to see them come back. Yeah, and I think the fact that the weather was well settled, the fact that it provides the variety, and I reckon that's one of the things that we undersell with Nelson, is that some areas have mountains, some areas have beach, uh, some areas have rivers. In really close proximity, we've got uh, all of those activities, and that's been very well advertised in God's own. Right. Well, as Minister of the Environment, you know that we've got one of the best <laughs> Very proudly <laughs> locations so. And uh, spent a good bit of my time uh, pushing the barrel for Nelson. And the degree to which our visitor numbers over summer, I would proffer, we don't have the numbers yet, but I would proffer that the 15, 16 summer has been the busiest summer ever for the Nelson visitor industry. I spent the Thursday prior to Easter in the industry, spent an afternoon um, at the desk at mm. the eyesight, and was just um, overwhelmed by the numbers that are coming through. Man, those people down there do a good job. Mm. Uh, but also the degree to which the competition in the airfares, you know, the visitor numbers going through Nelson Airport is just going through the roof. The numbers of people that are doing our cycleways and the growth of that, of which the next key stage is getting up through the, the tunnel at Kawatira. Then we've got uh, the international scene as well as proving very successful for New Zealand. Uh, in a funny way, the, the, the stars are just very well aligned for the visitor industry at the moment. You've got the whole sort of insecurity issues in Europe, making people hesitant of going there. You've got Zika virus in South America and parts of the Pacific that's adversely affecting their visitor industry. And of course we've got oil prices at an all-time low, which means those long-haul flights to New Zealand are more economic. We're viewed as safe um, and we provide exceptional service. The way in which the visitor industry, whether it's the accommodation, whether it's the visitor experiences, whether it's the food, all those elements over the last 25 years have hugely lifted their game. And the saving grace for New Zealand is even though our dairy exports have dropped by three billion, and that's a big hit for any economy to take, over the same period, the increase in the number of visitor numbers has more than compounded that. And that's one of the reasons our Kiwi economy is doing well. And finally, Motueka's Steiner School Fair on the weekend was a fun-filled, entertaining day for all the family. The themes of dragons and castles was magic and created an inspiring atmosphere for the very young and their families. The Rudolf Steiner School is community-owned and the fair brought the community together, supplying their resources from food, activities, stalls and horse rides through to field and stage entertainment. The school has been on a mission for a few years now to raise funds to build itself a new specially designed school on its own farm property before it can make the move to relocate. Currently the Rudolf Steiner School is located on Motueka's High Street in rented buildings. The vision of the school and its families is to develop an organic farming learning space, growing a source of food for families, creating a haven for nature, while further integrating the school curriculum with the farming of the land and making it a focal point for community. 
The school purchased a 13.6 hectare farm in 2015, largely thanks to some very generous donators. I caught up with Peter Garlick of the Steiner School to talk about the fair and the progress made so far on realising the school farm dream. Peter, the new school. Of course, every year, last year we caught up over the new school. How's it going so far? What's the progress? All right, well, we're in the resource consent stage at the moment, Chrissy. So hopefully that goes into council next week. Um, so all going well. Six to eight weeks we should have our resource consent. Oh, that's brilliant. I know, it'll be great. And, and so, okay, so you've got resource consent, so you've got all the designs uh, together? No, no, so not the design work. So resource consent is, it's largely about traffic engineering and stormwater, wastewater, those sorts of things. Right. Um, so once we've got that consent, then we move on to actually do the design of the buildings. Okay, and uh, right, and how many kids do you think you're going to try and put into the school? All right, yeah, no, we're going to build the school for 100, so about twice the size as we are now so that's the hope okay and how are the finances going well we could always do it some more um, we we hope to start building next year so that'll be just depending on the fundraising so you know my job I'll be ramping up my fundraising activities for the rest of the year now and if we get the money in then we'll have our first building sometime next year oh that's so exciting yes I bet the kids are excited yeah well the children are already going out using the farm so we've got gardening happening um, we've got some planting going on this winter so a lot of trees going in so they're, they're getting to use it but of course you know it's so much nicer to be there yeah 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 and um, last year's fair did that raise a good amount of money yeah we've had our fears have been going really well um, though a lot of the money for the fears still goes into running the school yes. on you know, the day-to-day -day costs of the school yeah. um, the new project with the farm we're finding with mainly that money's coming through from philanthropists from donors so one of the reasons I'm here today is talking to people and you know, sometimes people get inspired by the project and they're willing to help us. Great. Well, you know, one of the great things about Steiner is fantasy, isn't it? You yeah. know, and, and what, you, what you're doing, may have, some people may have thought was a fantasy but getting starting a new school, but you're making it a reality. Well, that's right. Yeah, I mean, I have to say at the beginning of the project, it seemed hugely ambitious to me as well. But, um, you know, we put it out there what we wanted we, and a lot of us have worked on the project and you know, when we when we needed money it came in. Steiner School has a give a little page where those who share the vision of the school farm can still donate towards the cause. You can find the link on the Steiner School website. We'll leave you now with some sights and sounds of Sunday's Where the Dragons Come Alive themed fair. <laughs> After the break, we'll bring you the latest weather update and some events and happenings coming up from around the region. We're the team at JCAR, right here in Nelson, 120 Hardy Street. Our shop is full of electronic items, including security alarm systems, electronic components, solar and power, electronics toys, sound systems, cables, and much, much more. Jacob, 120 Hardy Street, Nelson.
Welcome, me hearties, to Smuggler's Pub and Cafe. Famous for hearty meals, craft owls and a friendly service way. Sensational seasonal menus with meals all day and evening too. Or sell in for a snack with special menus for young smugglers and you. Settle in for a jolly old time. Relax and enjoy our award-winning dining and lovely fine wine. Decked out in an old worldly way, we're open seven days. Book or come on in to 8 Muratai Street, not far from a beach walk or swim. Phone 5464-08. Hi there, Julian Toon, Waimea Telecommunications. We install and maintain domestic and commercial satellite TV, UHF Freeview and mainland TV installations in the Nelson Tasman regions. We specialise in Panasonic telephone systems and provide communications, Wi-Fi, IT and wiring for internet, fibre, computers and DSL systems. At Waimea Telecommunications, we also provide specialist electronic systems for features such as a security camera you can watch on your TV, visitor alert systems and much more. Improve your security and communication and entertainment today. Call us on Waimea Telecommunications on 021-47-2297, ytel.co.nz. World War I was a defining period in our history, impacting greatly on the lives of people from the Nelson province. Memories of the First World War is an exhibition which will be displayed in a number of regional venues and is currently on at the Nelson Provincial Museum. Why would you want to pay as much as $1,000 for a single bed mattress when you can buy a high quality locally made mattress like this for as little as two twenty? And a queen size mattress could cost you in excess of $3,000 but at Nelson Beds you could have a mattress like this as low as four twenty five. So why would you go out and spend a fortune on your child's bedroom when you can come to Nelson Beds and buy a complete single mattress and base set, a seven drawer scotch chest, a headboard and a three drawer bedside cabinet for as little as nine seventy nine? So call and discuss our custom manufacturing options and local after sales service at Nelson Beds, Nelson's only bedding manufacturer. Victory 60 Plus is on Tuesdays at 1.30 through to 3.30pm at 238 Upper Vanguard Street. You can join in for cards, games and a cuppa. Sit and Be Fit is on at the Victory Community Centre Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10am at the Victory Community Church, 238 Upper Vanguard Street. School terms only. Fun while you get fitter, work at your level. On behalf of the team here at Mainland Television News, thank you for joining us and we'll bring you the latest news and events from around the region again tomorrow. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air. G'day, it's your old mate the Mad Butcher and you're watching Mainland TV. Welcome to Smugglers Pub and Cafe, open seven days a week with free parking all day. Our lunch menus have that fat old fashioned flavour where we treat you like treasure with the food you'll savour. We cater for children, grannies and granddads too, with special rates and privileges given to the elderly lunchtime crew. Our staff are friendly and kind and want to see you all come back time after time. Daytime or evening, it doesn't matter, give us a call on 546-4084 and we'll be happy to spoil you. Nelson Tire Center. Great prices, great service. Buy your own Bryford trailer. All types, all sizes. See Colin Douglas for your tires and batteries. 
Are you looking for a scooter, walker, wheelchair, baby seats or push chairs? Then come in and see the Nelson Region Specialist at Mobility for You. 269 Queen Street, Richmond, opposite the library. We have a huge selection of scooters, walkers, wheelchairs and accessories, along with a free booklet guide. We also provide a breakdown service if you ever get a puncher or a flat battery we have fully equipped service vans to rescue you. Hi, I'm Robin Jordan and I invite you to call in and see the friendly team at Mobility for You, 269 Queen Street, Richmond, opposite the library. World War I was a defining period in our history, impacting greatly on the lives of people from the Nelson province. Memories of the First World War is an exhibition which will be displayed in a number of regional venues and is currently on at the Nelson Provincial Museum.